Hey everyone, welcome to the Grace and Truth broadcast. I'm your host today, Dwayne Sheriff, and I'm sharing on the subject, I just began a new series entitled Divine Guidance. Divine Guidance. And we're looking at how God leads us, how God guides us in life. We've already looked at how that, man, it's your decisions and the quality of your life is affected by the decisions in your life. And we need the Lord's leading in these decisions in life. We need the Lord's voice. We need to discern the voice of the Lord and we need to heed the lead of the Holy Spirit. And so I want to do a quick review. I can't go over all I said in the last broadcast, but Romans chapter 8 is our main text. Let's look at verse 12. He's already talked about how that Christ dwells within us in verse 11 and is quickening our mortal bodies. But look at verse 12. Therefore, brethren, Christians, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you'll die. But if you by the Spirit, if you by the Spirit, if by the Spirit you, (laughs) excuse me, put to death the deeds of the body, you'll live. And so we saw how that we're not debtors to our flesh, our five physical senses, our carnal man, outward man, but we have the Spirit of God dwelling in us now. And look at this profound statement in verse 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. My goodness, that jumped out at me years ago that If you're born again, if you're a child of God, he goes on to make some incredible statements about being heirs of God now and joint heirs with Jesus. If the Spirit of God dwells within you, and if you're born again, the Spirit of God dwells within you. He said, now you are led by the Holy Spirit. When you get born again, being led by the Holy Spirit is your new birthright. Your born again birthright is the leading of the Holy Spirit. And again, I didn't understand this. I wasn't taught, but I had questions of, well, if the Lord is leading me, how did I end up over here? And if the Lord is leading me, then why did I make that decision? No, your decisions and your free will are up to you. And the Lord is leading, the Lord is guiding But if you don't take heed to the lead, you can get off the path of God's way for your life, God's plan for your life. But he doesn't quit leading even when we make a mistake. Even when we sin, fail, or fall, he doesn't quit speaking. He is constantly speaking to you. As many as are the children of God, they are led by the Holy Spirit. So he's leading you in the path of righteousness when you heed the lead when you override it, disregard it, dismiss it and make a bad choice and get off of the highway of God's best for your life, then he is still fellowshipping with you, not in your bad decision, not in any sin, but he's the one that's fellowshipping with you to repent, to turn around, to change your mind, to get back up on the highway of God's best for your life. God has a plan for our life. It's a perfect plan. It's a good, acceptable, and perfect will. But you have to renew your mind. You have to keep your mind stayed upon Him. And when you you get off of the highway of God's best, you take an off-ramp, the Holy Spirit's still leading and guiding you to repentance. We use the GPS illustration and how that The lady in the GPS system never leaves or forsakes you. She doesn't defriend you when you override, dismiss, or disregard her directions. She tells you to repent, turn around, make a U-turn. Then she recalculates your route. God is constantly drawing you to Himself, sharing His plan and goodwill for your life. He never, ever gives up on us. And I spent time on that in the last broadcast. So let's look at this leading from within because the primary way God leads is from within the Holy Spirit bearing witness with our spirit. Look at verse 15. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you did receive the spirit of adoption whereby you cry, Abba, Father. You have received the Holy Spirit 
and you've been adopted as a child of God, and as many as are the children of God, the same are led by the Holy Spirit. Then he says, the Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. It's the Holy Spirit that's bearing witness with your spirit. This is the way walk ye in it. And you can learn to discern. You can develop an ear to hear. And you can heed the lead. It's also the Holy Spirit that's telling you to repent, to change your mind, change your direction. You're on the wrong path. He's the one convicting you of, of what is right and that this is this is wrong. He bears witness with your spirit. This is the truth. He bears witness with your spirit. This is a lie. This is the good path. That's the bad path. He's constantly leading either in righteousness or repentance. Ezekiel saw this in Ezekiel 36. Let's take a look at the prophet Ezekiel's proclamation of the new covenant and what was to come. In chapter 36, we'll just look here quickly at verse 26. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I'm going to take that cold, hard, insensitive, dull of hearing heart. That's what Israel, in their rebellion, in their resistance to God, in their disobedience, in their stumbling even at the rock, Jesus Christ, it was because of their hard heart. When, when the heart is hardened, the ear is dulled. The eye is blinded. That's what hard hearts do. And the New Testament warns us of hardening our heart and not hardening our heart as they did in the day of provocation. Hebrews chapter 3 talks about this. And so he says, but I'm going to take away that stony, hard heart that was dull of hearing, that was like a mule that had to be beat and bit and bridle in the mouth of the horse to pull it to the left or to pull it to the right. But I will put a new spirit within you and look at this, I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh, a sensitive, pliable, workable heart. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. Look at that. That is so powerful. He says, I'm first of all going to take away that hard, stiff neck, rebellious heart that's dull of hearing and blind in seeing. I'm going to give you a sensitive heart, a pliable heart, a workable heart, a new spirit. That's your born again spirit that Jesus speaks of in John chapter 3, verses 3 through 6. That the new birth is the birth of our spirit, not our flesh, not our outer man, but an inner man. I'll, I'll give you a brand new spirit and then I will put my spirit in you. That's the spirit the Holy Spirit that bears witness with your spirit that you're a child of God, that bears witness with your spirit, this is who you need to marry, that bears witness with your spirit, this is where you need to work, etc., etc., etc. And I will cause you, I will cause you, look at it again, verse 27, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do that. I will, I will lead you from within. I will give you promptings from within. Turn to the right, turn to the left. I'll give you inspiration and witness from with, within. I will lead you from within in the ways of God, my statutes, my judgments. What a powerful promise. Hebrews 4, 2 says we need to mix faith with this promise of God. Thank you for this promise, God, that you are in me, never to leave or forsake me, even unto the ends of this world. And you will lead me. You will guide me. And if I get off the path, you will draw me back. You will show me how to get back. Man, that is so powerful. So the primary way God leads us is with our inner man, and the Spirit bearing witness with our inner man, this is the way of the Lord, walk ye in it. So many people are trying to hear an audible voice with these ears, like I did for years, and, and aren't doing well. 
So many people are looking at their circumstances to lead them and, and are making poor judgments because of their negative circumstances. God's not leading us by our circumstances. He's not manipulating things from without to get us to change, to get us to turn, to get us to, to walk with Him or fulfill His will for our lives. No, He is speaking to you, but it's in your spirit. He's leading you, but it's by His Spirit in your spirit. That is so powerful. John 16, this is what Jesus promised to His disciples and, and thereby us in John chapter 16. We're going to look at verse 12. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Jesus had a lot of things He wanted to say to the disciples, but remember, brothers and sisters, they were not born again. They were not filled with the Holy Spirit. That didn't happen till the day of Pentecost. And so there were some things they just could not understand. They couldn't perceive. They, could not, they couldn't even conceive certain things. And Jesus said, I got many things but I just, uh, to say to you, but I just can't, can't say them now. I mean, how many times did he tell them, I'm going to the cross, I'm going to die, I'll be dead for three days, but on the third day I'm coming back. <laughs> how many times did he say that to them and they didn't get it? And so now he's saying, I got so many things to say, but you can't bear it now. However, there's a time, in other words, however, there's a time coming you'll be able to bear it, conceive it, perceive it. However, when he... The Spirit of truth has come. He will guide you into all truth. For He will not speak of His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak. And He will tell you things to come. Man, you've got to have help to miss that. <laughs> Fortunately, many of us have had a lot of help evidently to miss that. Jesus said the Holy Spirit's going to come. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is going to guide you, not into a little bit of truth, some truth, but all truth. And saints, he's not talking about just revelation of the kingdom of God. The Holy Spirit is the truth teller. The Holy Spirit is the truth giver. And the Holy Spirit is the one that leads you into all truth. Man, this is something that the body of Christ needs a great awakening in. All the deception in our world, all the fraud, the fake news media, and the deception is over the top. We are in danger right now. I'm talking sincere danger because of the lies of the media and their cover-ups and how they've protected Joe Biden, who, who is absolutely declining in cognitive uh, abilities and, and they've hid it and covered it and hid it and covered it. And anybody who brought it out was attacked and maligned and called liars while they were lying, covering up this man's condition, putting the entire country at great risk. They, they just continued to lie. And they've recently, I don't know when this broadcast is going to air and where, but they've just recently come clean only because they had to and they're fearing losing power. They are not truth tellers. And yet so many Christians buy into the national media narratives that lead to death and destruction. We need to be truth tellers and we need to be truth perceivers and truth pursuers. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Notice two times in that verse 16. Let's look at it, or 13, excuse me. Chapter 16, verse 13. However, when He, the Spirit of truth, the Spirit and the leading of the Spirit is truth. He's the Spirit of truth. He's not the Spirit of lies and fraud and deception. He's the Spirit of truth. When He, the Spirit of truth, is come, and He has come, He came on the day of Pentecost, he will guide you into how much truth? All truth, saints. All truth. You know, one of the things, again, that disheartens me about the discernment or lack thereof in the body of Christ, if you can't discern all these political lies and agendas and narratives and cover-ups, 
How, how are you going to discern the Antichrist in the day of great delusion and deception that's ahead? We, we're supposed to look at these things and learn, and the Holy Spirit will tell you that's not the truth, that's not the truth, that's not the truth. They lie and covered up preferred candidates, and they lie about unpreferred candidates. And if you can't see through the lies, you're going to be deceived, and it's going to lead to death. The country literally is collapsing because of lies and fraud and deception. He will, he will guide you into all truth, for He will not speak of His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak. The Holy Spirit speaks. God still speaks. You just have to learn to discern the voice, the language of the Holy Spirit, and submit. Whatever He hears, He will speak. And He will tell you things to come. He'll tell you. He'll communicate. He'll speak to you about things to come. The Holy Spirit has spoken to me uh, uh, numerous times of things to come and things present etc., etc., and you can learn to discern the voice of the Lord. Look at Philippians chapter 2. Paul again here in Philippians making a profound statement of how God works in our lives, how God moves in our lives. How does God speak? The first thing you've got to establish, and I'm endeavoring to establish, establish is that He does speak. God does speak, no matter how many gainsayers there are in regards to the voice of God, no matter how many people mock the voice of God, even within the church, God is a God who speaks. He's the divine communicator. He's the great communicator, and He speaks. We just have to learn to discern His voice and heed the lead of the Holy Spirit. Look at Philippians 2, remarkable statement, verse 12. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do of His good pleasure. You work out your own salvation. See, your salvation is on the inside. Your born-again spirit is righteous and truly holy. It knows nothing but truth. Your righteous spirit is born of the Spirit of God. It is born of the truth. And now you have to work it out. You have to get what's in your spirit, in your soul, your mind, will, emotions, emotions, intellect. You have to renew your mind. The transformation of the Christian life doesn't come from the renewing of your spirit. It comes from the renewing of your mind. Your spirit doesn't need renewed. Your spirit is recreated in the image and renewed in the image of God. Colossians 3.10 says, that is so powerful. Your born again spirit is righteous and truly holy. It's your mind, your will, your emotions, your thoughts that have to be renewed, have to be changed. And so you've got the Holy Spirit from within. And Paul is saying, work it out with fear, reverential fear and trembling, for it is God at work in you. Where does God work in your life? He works within. Where's His will? His will is within. We keep looking for the will of God out here. We keep looking for the voice of God out here. We keep looking for the leading of the Holy Spirit out here. God's will is in here, brothers and sisters. It's in your born-again spirit. And He's communicating with that spirit. He's in union with that spirit. He's speaking truth to your spirit man. And then from your spirit man, your soul has to be renewed to it, yielded to it. You have to learn to discern. You have to develop an ear to hear. Jesus said in Mark chapter 4, He that hath a, has an ear to hear, let him hear. Let him hear. Revelation 2 and 3. Multiple times Jesus said, He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. God is still speaking to our churches. We're just not listening. God is still leading our churches. We're just not heeding the lead. Many of our churches have become carnal and they're in debt to the flesh and walking after it instead of after the Spirit. 
So you have to establish this first, that the primary way God leads you is from within. He can use things without. I'll talk about that in some upcoming messages. But the primary way He speaks to you is that still small voice in your, in your spirit, that prompting, that leaning that you feel. Again, God leads from within. And this is important. So number one in being led by the Lord is you have to believe He speaks and then learn His language. Number two, you have to learn to heed the lead. Again, when I was a young Christian, I would hear people talk about God showing them things, telling them things, speaking to them, and I would feel second rate, second class, like a stepchild in the kingdom of God and lesser than anyone else who had a corner, I thought, on God to hear His voice. And so I had to renew my mind to, wait a minute, God is the God of the Bible who speaks. And, and one of the things that you need established and that God wills to establish in your life are, are two things that are assumed in Scripture throughout the entire Bible. There are two primary things that are just there. There seems to be no attempt to prove them, verify them, explain them. They just are. Two major things. Number one is God is. There is a God. We learn this from the first, the first scripture in the Bible. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. While things that are seen were made from things unseen, only the things seen have a beginning. God, who we do not see with these eyes, had no beginning. God was in the beginning. God was before the beginning, and God is after the beginning. And so there just is this assumption that there is a God, that God exists. And there's an intuitive knowledge on the inside of every human being that there is a God. God speaks to every human being that He is, that He exists. Romans chapter 1 declares this, that they knew there was a God and they refused to glorify Him and be thankful and literally rejected the voice of God. They rejected that intuitive knowledge that there's a God. Man, there's so much can be said about that. Everyone knows there's a God. There's no such thing as an atheist. Many people choose to become an atheist. Many people reject the knowledge of God. But everyone, Romans chapter 1 says, has a knowledge a knowledge of God, and they have to reject that knowledge. They have to become ungrateful and unthankful. They have to resist that knowledge and God in order to be eventually given over to a reprobate mind. And so God is, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, uh, it speaks of this same, same, same principle. It says, without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So that's number, number one. And number two is God speaks. Genesis 1, 3, and God said, let there be. And God said, and God said, and God has been speaking ever since. Men have either been dismissing, disregarding, rejecting, or rebelling against the, the, the voice of God or heeding the lead of the Holy Spirit. So I'll get into this in more detail. I want to encourage you to get our new book called Divine Guidance. Divine Guidance. Hearing and responding to the voice of God. In this book, I cover God's voice, how to hear God's voice, how to discern God's voice. The things I'm going to be teaching on and have taught on are in this book called Divine Guidance. You can get the first chapter absolutely free with no obligation if you'll contact us at dsm at pastordwayne.com. dsm at pastordwayne.com. That's our email address. 
and we'll have a, a QR co code there for you to download absolutely free, no obligation, the first chapter, just to give you something to, to look at to see if you want to continue to pursue that. So the first chapter, no obligation whatsoever. We're also making a special offer of a signed copy of Divine Guidance for our first-time partners. If you'll pray about being just a first-time partner of any commitment of any size, we'll send you a signed copy of Divine Guidance. You can get that at dsm at pastordwayne.com or you can call us at area code 580-4040-DSM. Area code 580-4040-376. We have prayer partners available to help you get your free copy of Divine Guidance, signed copy. Also, that's our website at pastordwayne.com. PastorDwayne.com is the website that has all of our free materials, um, all of our series, DVDs that you can order absolutely free, videos that you can download absolutely free, thousands of messages, and uh, our partners make that possible. So thank you, financial partners, for helping us distribute, wow, well over 100 million free messages and so much more. We've even lost count but we're so blessed and we're so thankful for our partners. God bless you for being a part of the broadcast. I hope this has been a blessing for you. See you on the next one. Your children are a precious gift from the Lord, yet their sense of identity is under attack daily. Negative words and destructive voices often bombard their minds. Counteract these words by learning how to speak God's truth over them. In the devotional book, Blessing Your Children in Prayer and Faith, Dwayne Sheriff reveals the importance of praying for your children. Each topic contains a prayer and scriptures that impart God's blessings, unconditional love, affirmation, peace, and protection over them. To order your copy of Blessing Your Children in Prayer and Faith, visit us online at pastordwayne.com or call us at 580-404-0376. Divine Guidance, Dwayne Sheriff demystifies the way God communicates and equips you to discern His voice amidst life's chaos. To order your copy of Divine Guidance, visit us online at PastorDwayne.com or call us at 580-404-0376. Thanks so much for watching. All of our content is available for free because of the generous donations from partners of Dwayne Sheriff Ministries. Visit our website, pastordwayne.com, to find the full message series and to learn how you can help partner with us. We hope you enjoyed this message.